everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back with another set guide and review, and this time it is for the nostalgic tobacco era inspired set 2021 Tops Allen and Ginter. Always known to be a little bit of an oddity, the question we have to ask ourselves in this review is Does this set scream nostalgic fun, or is it just kind of a weird one? Well, it's time to find out in this One Cent Sports Cards 2021 Tops Allen & Ginter Set Guide and Review. So with the summer days getting shorter and the playoff races heating up, we get another set from Topps. It's 2021 Topps Allen and & Ginter. And in this set guide and review, what we're looking to do is find out how good Topps Allen & Ginter really is. And we do that with the exclusive one cent sensational set ranking. What is that you ask? Well, let me explain. First, it is the most in-depth ranking system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. We break this set down into 10 different categories. Everything from the auto checklist to the cost value to the inserts, the relics, the variations. If it's in this set, we're covering off on it. And each one of these categories is going to be worth 1 to 10 points. What we do with that is we add them all up and then use the scoring guide on the left of your screen to give Topps Allen & Ginter a one to five star ranking. Then what we'll do is compare all of the 2021 set with the set that was released last year in 2020 to see if the set is getting better, to see if it's getting worse, and we'll compare it to all of the other sets that have been released in 2021 so far to see how good it stacks up against this year's competition. So before we begin, I've got one more thing. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's the best way that you can support the channel and support these reviews. If you like these reviews, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can see all of them. We do reviews for all of the major releases in the baseball card season. And if you want to be the first to view them, hit that bell notification so you can see them first. So 2021 tops Allen and Ginter. Here's what we're going to cover off on today. First, we'll start with the set highlights. Basically tell you what Allen and Ginter is, what you can find out of it, tell you what the different buying formats are, tell you what the key cards are, what we're looking to pull out of the packs, what the big hits are going to be, dig a little bit deeper, cover off on the different parallels you can pull, the different inserts you can be looking for, the relics, the autos, and I'm even going to tell you a few teams that I think would be smart teams to buy into for breaks. I'll give you what I think the best team is. Give you a couple sleepers, the team that has the most value. A couple teams that I think will be nice, solid choices. Then I'll give my opinions on what I think the set positives are, what I think the set negatives are, and that's what brings us to our one cent sensational set ranking where we find out how good 2021 Topps Allen & Ginter really is. And then we'll look at all of the set rankings to date for every set that has been released in 2021 to find out how Allen & Ginter stacks up amongst the competition. So let's begin. Topps Allen & Ginter, the first thing you need to know, it is a very eclectic mix of baseball stars and cultural icons. It is an ode to the late 1800s tobacco manufacturer Allen & Ginter, who is known as the company that created the first trading cards that were released nationally in the United States. The new 2021 set features baseball stars and cultural icons, so it's not just baseball cards. It also has interesting topics. This year's got things like foods that are good for you and dinosaur DNA. The reason it does that is the old Allen and Ginter sets from long ago did that same thing. So that's what we're drawing the inspiration from. It's from the late 1800 tobacco set from Allen and Ginter. The new set is in its 16th year of production, started back in 2006 and has not stopped since. This year's set has 350 different base cards in the set checklist and cards number 301 through 350 are short prints. 
There's also 50 more cards, but it's not part of the base set checklist. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more about that. The entire set also has a mini tobacco sized card version of the base set that is produced. So technically it's two different sets, the full size and the mini size. They both have 350 cards. Allen & Ginter is available in hobby and retail formats. And if you're buying into the hobby format, you can find three hits out of every box. You can get a relic, you can get auto, a rip card. We'll go into what that is in a minute. And you can even get Allen & Ginter original buybacks. This year, there are also three short print image variations in the base set checklist. You've got Badu, Mercedes, and Kelnick, so some three hot rookies that we'll be looking for in image variations. Those are sure to be chase cards. And for our parallels, first, you're going to mainly find them in the mini-sized version, the tobacco-sized version of the set. And the parallels don't work off of a color rainbow so much as they work off of materials such as stained glass, metal, wood, those sorts of things. We've even got cloth in there. So the parallels are very different than most other sets that you're going to find in the card collecting season. Finally, we have the DNA relics, which lead a very large relic lineup, which Allen and Ginter is also known for. Uh, this year we get dinosaur DNA, which I think is stinking awesome. And of course, the ever popular rip card returns. We can get single, doubles, and triples available in a box topper. What a rip card is, you have to rip the card open and destroy the card to find additional cards that are contained within the original card. So you have to ask yourself one question if you find one. Are you going to rip it or are you going to keep it? A very cool card, one of my personal favorite cards every year in the card collecting season. So what are the different buying formats we can get Allen and Ginter in? Well, first for hobby, you can get a case. Case is gonna have 12 boxes in it. There's 24 packs per box, eight cards per pack. That'll get you 2,304 total cards. Cost you around 1,500 bucks, so your cost per card is 66 cents. What you're guaranteed to get out of that are 34 hits, all combined autos, relics, rip cards, you are guaranteed also to get two rip cards. There are 288 different mini parallels and you get 12 box toppers. If you don't have that sort of cash, drop down to the hobby box, 24 packs per box, eight cards per pack, 192 total cards, cost you around 125 bucks for a cost per card of 67 cents. You're gonna get three hits, 24 mini parallels and a box topper. We also have the retail format. First, you can get a retail box, 24 packs in the box, brings it down to six cards per pack. So we've only got 144 total cards versus the hobby, which was 192. Cost you 80 bucks though, cost per card around 56 cents on that. The blaster boxes obviously will be available, eight packs per box, six cards per pack, 48 total cards for a cost of around 20 bucks. Cost per card on that going to be 42 cents. And you do get one rookie card design variation, which is a retail exclusive in 2021. We also have the Val Pack. You're going to get three packs plus one five card gold parallel pack. So you get six cards in each pack for a total of 23 total cards. Cost you around 10 bucks and you get a cost per card of 43 cents. Then you can also get a fact pack that's going to have 14 cards. $5 on a price and a cost per card being the lowest of all of the formats at 36 cents a card. You'll also find individual gravity feeds hanging around the retail format and it's possible that additional formats will be available based upon the retail location. So what are the different base parallels? Like I mentioned before, the parallels don't work on typical colors. They work a little bit differently. So let's dive in. First of all, on the full size cards, not a lot of parallels at all. You can get a hot box, which is available. Don't know if that's one per case or maybe a little bit less, but the hot box, every card is going to be a silver portrait card. So it'll be kind of a glossy silver that you get. And that is the hot box parallel. And the only other one you can get is a glossy one of one. But when we drop down to the mini tobacco sized cards, the parallels open up a little bit. You do get one mini parallel in a pack, but you can also get the Allen and Ginter back. That's going to fall one in five packs. 
a black border which will be one in 10 packs, a no numbered card on the back, which will be limited to 50, not numbered to 50, but limited to 50. The gold border parallel, which is the retail format parallel and the Brooklyn back, which will be numbered to 25. They are hand numbered in the past. Don't know if they will be this year, but they will be numbered to 25. And then a hobby exclusive wood material, which will be a one of one and a glossy one of one as well. Now there's also short print mini parallels. Those are the high number short prints in the mini version. Those are going to land one in 13 packs and they have a bunch of parallels as well. They've got the ANG, the black border, the no number, the gold, the Brooklyn back, the wood and the glossy. But then we also have a mini metal which only has 150 cards, so it's not the full base set checklist, just 150 cards. Those are limited to three, not numbered to three, but they are metal, and they are found in hobby format. We also have the mini stained glass, which is also 150 cards. Those are limited, not numbered, to 25. And we have the framed mini printing plates, so all of the printing plates will be framed, and they are one of ones. And we have the framed mini cloth, which is a cloth version of a card. And those are numbered to 10. There's 150 of them, and they're only found in hobby as well. So very different parallels compared to what your normal, what you normally see in a set. For our key cards, let's cover off on the rookies first. A very nice rookie lineup in Topps, Allen, and Ginter this year. We've got Ryan Mountcastle, Cabrian Hayes, Jake Cronenworth, Alec Bohm, Akil Badu, which is one of these short print image variations. That'll be a very sought after card. You've got the Alex Kirilov, Dylan Carlson, Joe Adele, Yerman Mercedes is another short print that you can pull from this. You've got Jonathan India in the set. Andrew Vaughn gets a rookie card in Allen and Ginter. We haven't seen that yet. So Andrew Vaughn gets his first official rookie in Allen and Ginter. We've got Jazz Chisholm. And finally, the Jared Kelnick short print image variation. Obviously, that one's going to be sought after as well. For our parallels, variations, autos, relics, and more. Obviously, the short print rookie card variation is going to be really sought after. And the framed mini cloth inserts, those ones that are numbered to 10, very popular, beautiful cards. You find them in hobby. Very cool one there. We've got the framed originals. Those are one of ones. Those are the buybacks that you're going to find. So those will be cards from 100 years ago, and they'll all be nicely framed like Allen and Ginter does so well. Obviously, those are all going to be one of ones. Huge pulls if you can get them. You've also got the rookie design variation minis. Those are the ones that you're going to find in the retail boxes. You've got the stained glass minis, very cool cards, always sought after. You can see what those look like over on the right. We've also got the ever popular rip card. We covered off on what those were earlier. We've got the DNA mini relics. Those are numbered to 25 or less, and they are awesome. They are dinosaur DNA relics, which is totally cool. There are autographed relics and dual autographed relic book cards. They're each going to be numbered to 10 and cut signatures make a return. Some absolutely fantastic names. We've got prior presidents. We've got cultural icons, some huge names. If you pull some of those, they are awesome cards, hold a ton of value. Obviously, those are each going to be numbered one of one as well. And of course, we also have the non-sports autos. We'll cover off on those here in a little bit. So what are the different inserts? Buckle up because Allen and Ginter has a ton of inserts. It is an insert driven set. So we'll go a little quick here. We've got the Allen and Ginter box loaders, which they have every year. There's gonna be 15 cards in that set. The ANG N43 box loaders, there's gonna be 15 cards in that set. The M43 harkens back to the old Allen and Ginter sets from the 1800s, how they numbered them. So they are M43 box loaders. We've got the Arboreal, Appreciation cards, those are cards of trees. We also have the artist original sketches, which are only found in the rip cards. You gotta rip open the rip card to find these. There's 29 cards. They are each numbered one of one. And we've got birds of a feather, 10 cards in that set. Obviously cards of birds. 
we have the box loader triple rip card three cards you can find inside that box loader there are 30 cards in that one only available in hobby we've got more inserts we've got the deep sea shiva 16 cards in that set there's also a short print of a spinner shark that is available in that set as well you can see what those cards look like over there on the right we've got the dual rip card where they've got two rip cards inside the original card 45 cards in that subset and they are available to hobby packs only we've got the far far away minis 15 cards in that set those will be cards of planets that are far far away We've got the framed mini cloths, 150 cards in that set, each number to 10, only available in hobby. And the good for you minis, the 20 cards in that set of foods that are good for you. We've got the hats off minis, which is cards of hats, 15 cards in that subset, and more inserts. We've got the historic hits, 50 cards in that set. Uh, those are cards of hits that are historic in Major League Baseball history. And we've got the mascots in real life minis. Those are 22 cards and they are cards of animals that are mascots in MLB, but the actual real animal like a monkey or an elephant or something like that. We've got the metal minis. So those will be metal versions of the minis, 150 cards in that subset. Three copies only available of, of each of those and they are only available in hobby format. Then we have the mini exclusives. I mentioned this earlier. The mini exclusives, there's 50 cards in that set only available if you rip a rip card. That is cards that take the mini set from cards number 351 all the way up to 400. So it's a high number, high number short print on top of that. And there are parallels of these available. So there is the stained glass, which you're gonna find those, one per box topper rip card. And then there's the metal, which is number to three. And then you've got the wood one of one. Very cool cards right there. We've also got the rallying back insert 10 cards in that subset those are of animals that are rallying back from extinction and we've got the single rip card which you can see what that looks like over with the juan soto at the right uh, there are a hundred different rip card subjects available and there's even more inserts we've got the rookie design variation minis not quite sure how many cards are in that subset i believe it's around 35 i could be wrong on that but you're going to find those in retail one in eight packs you're going to find those in your blaster boxes you've got the stained glass minis 150 cards each with 25 copies and you've got the t51 murdad reimagined you can see what that looks like over there on the right there are 50 cards in that subset and what's really awesome is we've got a T51 Murdad, our Murad framed cloth version, and there's 50 cards in that, but they are each numbered to 51, and it is a cloth version. We've also got the World Leaders minis. That's going to be world leaders that are across our globe. And we've got the world's largest box topper. So those are really large things in the world. 15 cards in that subset, and there are 500 copies of each. And we've got the world's largest minis, which will have those same world's largest thing just on the mini cards, 25 cards in that subset. There are also relics. We've got the A and G framed originals. So those are the 100 buyback cards. They're each going to be numbered one of one. And we have the A and G relics, the version A, which will be one design. You're going to find these in most of your hobby boxes, some of the more common ones, 56 cards in that subset. And the relics B, which is a different design, 62 cards in that subset. We also have the Deep Sea Shiver Relics, four cards in that subset. Expect to see some shark teeth. That would be really cool. And the DNA Mini Relics, nine cards in that subset, each number to 25 or less, and that's going to have dinosaur DNA, which is really cool. We've got the Framed Mini Relics. Those are going to be 57 cards in that subset. And the Mythical Relics, seven cards, each number to 25 or less, only available in Hobby. And those are relics of goblins, vampires, gnomes, etc. So some kind of made up relics, if you will, but still a very, very cool card to pull. And of course, Alan and Ginter has autographs. First of all, the A and G box loaders, those can be autographed. There's 17 cards in that subset. They're each numbered to 15 or less. 
We've got the M43 box loaders in the autographed versions, 11 cards in that subset, numbered to 15 or less. There are dual autographs, three cards in that subset. One of them is of the Hanson Brothers, which is hilarious. We've also got the framed mini autographs. This is what you're going to find more often than not in your pack pulls. 106 cards. You can see what those look like over there on the right. There are parallels of red ink, which are only available in hobby, and black framed, which is going to be numbered 225. We also have the framed mini employee autographs. There's 12 cards in that subset. Those are cards of employees of major league baseball teams and for our autographed relics we have the autographed relic books returning there are 45 different cards in that set each number to 10 or less and there are the dual autographed relic books 19 cards in that of course number to 10 or less as well and finally the cut signatures which has 16 cards some awesome names on that set checklist and they're all numbered to one of one so with that all being said we now know what allen and ginter has to offer what are the teams we should be targeting in brace what are the good ones what are some sleepers well let's cover off on them we'll start with what i believe the best team is and it's actually not a team at all I think it is the non-baseball spot because of the sheer volume of cards and hits that are available in that spot. Keep in mind with Topps, Allen, and Ginter, there are 31 spots available in a break, not 30 because we have the non-baseball card spot. So with the non-baseball card spot, there are 134 different base cards, 47 different autos, 43 relics and 194 different inserts that you can pull from that non-baseball card spot. So just a monster of a spot. Like I said, the sheer volume, there is not going to be a better spot that you can buy and to pick your team. It will be the most expensive one. It's going to be your best chance at some of those cut signatures. Just a fantastic one. If you get it in a random team break, keep it. It is a great, great spot to get. But with all that being said, that doesn't take away from the fact that there are some really nice actual baseball team spots as well. So let's cover off on some of those. If you're looking for the most autos, look at the Philadelphia Phillies. They've got 10 different base cards, three different rookie cards that you can pull out of that. They do have one high number short print. 12 different autos that you can pull and some of those are going to be your rookies um, some of those some of your stars like reese hoskins bryce harper whatnot uh, seven different relics eight different rip cards and 28 different inserts if you're looking for a solid choice i would look at the chicago cubs they've got 11 different base cards there is only one rookie card and only one high number short print but a very nice even numbers of 10 different autos 10 different relics, 10 different rip cards, and a high number of inserts at 36. So I believe consistency is going to be the key with the Chicago Cubs. I believe you'll see if you want a rip card, you've got a decent chance. You want an auto, you've got a decent chance. You like those relics, you've got a decent chance. And even if you don't hit any of them, I believe that based upon the fact that you've got a nice number of base cards, nice number of inserts, there's plenty to walk away with with the Chicago Cubs. But if you're looking for the team with the most value and what I believe is probably the best baseball team spot, look at the New York Yankees. You've got 16 base cards, four different rookie cards, four high number short prints, 11 autos, 13 relics, 17 different rip cards and 55 different inserts. It is dominating from the baseball card spot. It's also got it's got rookie cards, high number short prints. If you like those rip cards, you've, your best chance is going to be the Yankees. So if you get those in a pick your team, I believe it's going to be your second most valuable spot and maybe hold more value than the non-baseball card spot, depending on which cards get pulled. But the Yankees are a very, very solid, solid team. If you get them in a random, keep them. Just run with the Yankees. I don't think that you'll be disappointed. But if you're looking for a sleeper, look at the Minnesota Twins, much more of a small market team, but a very nice showing in Allen and Ginter. You've got 10 base cards, two rookie cards, five high number short prints, 11 autos, just as many as the Yankees have, 
eight relics, eight rip cards, and 30 inserts. I believe that this team will not be a top 10 ranked team and a pick your team. I believe that this team will be one of those that if you're looking to trade out of a team that you got that you didn't like, and maybe it's not one of the best teams, I believe you could probably swing a trade for the Twins. And if you do, some very nice names in there. Killebrew, uh, Rod Carew, you've got the Twins' nostalgic past that kind of harkens in Allen and Ginter real big time. Plus, you've got a couple rookie cards. You've got a decent chance at a rip card. So don't pass on the Minnesota Twins. My next sleeper, I don't know if it's as big a sleeper as the Twins, but I'm going to throw out the St. Louis Cardinals. You've got 12 base cards, one rookie card, 11 different autos, just as many as the Yankees have, nine different relics, eight rip cards, and plenty of inserts at 44. And again, just like the Twins, some very nice names from the Twins past in there. Uh, Solid all-around set with the rip cards, with the relics. So the Cardinals... Another team that if you can trade for them in a random team break or maybe get them at a cheap price at a pick your team break, I think the Cardinals, if you're looking for some cheap value, are going to be a nice team that you can buy into as well. So the Twins, Cardinals, my sleepers. If you get the Yankees, if you get that non-baseball card spot in a, in a random team break, you're doing great. If you're willing to pay for them, I think you're doing great as well in a pick your team. And the Phillies, the Cubs, also some nice teams. And as you look at some of the other ones, I, I actually passed on a few. The Dodgers are also very good in this. And the Mariners, of course, with that Kelnick short print, some value there. So lots of different good teams in Allen and Ginter for breaks. So don't pass on Allen and Ginter and breaks. So what are the overall set positives? Well, Allen and Ginter, it's like no other set, which I think is awesome. It's a very unique set. It's got oddities. It's kind of a set all into it, its own. It's got a unique cards all throughout. The designs are kind of cool. We've got DNA relics, stuff that you're not going to find in any other set. It really differentiates itself from a lot of sets that way. We've also got plenty of 2021 rookies that we can hit in this set, and we've even got three of the short print variations. It's really the most complete rookie card set that's been released to date from Tops, which I think is really cool. We've also got a very strong lineup of non-baseball card stars and icons, and historically those cards hold decent value. So those cut signatures, be on the lookout for those. Some very nice names in the non-baseball checklist. So go check those out if you haven't done so already. And the auto cards in Allen and Ginter are beautiful. The framed minis are some of the most sought after autos. Very much kind of like the Topps Heritage Real One autos. They're all on card. They're very beautiful. They're very sought after. And some of them on some of the bigger names can hold some real nice value on the secondary market. Also, if you like inserts, this is your set. Don't pass on Allen and Ginter. There is not a set with more inserts. Now, granted, you're going to get some birds. Granted, you're going to get some foods that are healthy for you. But you're also going to get some very, very nice baseball, you know, the historic hits ones, the, the, the Murad 51 redesigns. So there's some very nice baseball ones in there as well. If you like inserts, this is your set. And finally, that rip card, one of the most fun cards to pull in the entire hobby. When you get one, it's nervous time, it's exciting. Do you rip it? Do you keep it? It's really what I think the hobby is all about. It brings excitement and it brings a little bit of suspense and some entertainment along with just pulling cards that's above and beyond. There's nothing like it in the hobby when you pull one. So if you can get lucky enough to get one, they're very, very cool. But we also have some set negatives. The most obvious one being that this set is totally polarizing. This is a love it or hate it set. There are not many people that say, oh, it's okay. You hear people that will say it is awesome because of the oddities. It is awesome because of the random and kind of unique cards that you can pull out of it. And then you hear other people that will say, I thought I was buying a baseball card set. Why is there so much nonsense in this set? I believe that when you look at the history of Allen and Ginter, it makes a ton of sense to me, but you're going to hear some channels, some big channels even, that they will kind of take their shots on Allen and Ginter. 
I fall on the side of liking it because of its unique nostalgic past and the unique nature of the cards that come out, but totally get the people that say, well, I buy baseball cards for baseball cards. Um, so if you're one of those people, you probably do not like Allen and Ginter. Also, the numbered parallels in Allen and Ginter are close to non-existent. They do exist. There are numbered ones, but a lot of times they will say it's limited to 50 copies, but it won't be numbered. I don't like that. I believe if it's limited to 50, put the serial number on it. I get that why they can't do that on a stained glass card. It's kind of hard to do. But I do believe that that serial number that says it's 250 is worth more money and value if you're trying to sell the card than saying it's limited to 50. That number means something when you're trying to resell a card. The other thing, the base card design this year is very similar to last year. There's not a lot of variation. From year to year, there isn't with Allen and Ginter, but it's a little too close to last year. And as always in the retail and hobby release, we're going to have a higher production run. So that lowers the card values a little bit. Here's where I go with that. Obviously, some of the big hits, some of those DNA relics, some of those cut uh, signatures, some of those longer odd pulls, they hold a ton of value. But many of the base cards, like the base rookies and stuff, they're going to be soft on the secondary market, probably like a rung below, say, Stadium Club or something like that. A rookie card from Allen & Ginter is not going to hold the value that a rookie card from Flagship or Finest is going to hold. And a lot of that has to do with production run. Finally, I would like to see the auto options for Allen and Ginter expand a little bit. What I mean by that is the subsets. There's just not a lot of different subsets of autos. It would be kind of nice to see the Murad set have some autos in it. Kind of being nitpicky here, but would like to see Allen and Ginter expand out a little bit on the autographs that are available throughout the set. I think it would bring a little bit more value to the set. So with all that being said, that brings us to our one cent sensational set ranking. So how good is 2021 Topps Allen & Ginter? Well, like I said, we break it into 10 different categories. Our first one being appeal. This year, I give it a 6.5. I believe in 2021, every set has some appeal. There are plenty of people that say, I don't like it because of all the non-baseball card cards that are in it. And for every one of those people, there's people that say, I do love it exactly for that reason. But with all that being said, I give it a 6.5. I think there is some appeal here, especially at the price point. And I believe that it in 2021 deserves a 6.5. Our base set checklist. We have a very nice rookie checklist in 2021 for Allen and Ginter. I believe the most complete one from top so far. So I go ahead and give it a 7 got some nice hall of famers in there as well and some of the non-baseball cards have some nice one look for trevor lawrence this year for example we also have the inserts and relics this is an awesome insert driven set and it is an awesome relic driven set i'm going to go ahead and give it a 9.5 anytime you put dinosaur dna in a relic i'm going to give you a nine or plus uh, for the parallels and variations, we do have three short print variations for the rookies. However, on the parallels, again, like I said, because they don't have the numbers on them, I give it a little bit of a kick on that downwards only because I just think it, it doesn't hold the same value when you say it's limited to 50 or limited to 500, whatever it is. Put the number on it. I don't understand why some of them don't have the number on it. And I feel like it would really help there. Plus the parallels I think are not as quite approachable because of the fact that we've got the A and G back and some that are a little bit more subtle. I love the wood and the different materials. I love the idea behind it. But I think it's a little less approachable. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. The auto checklist, I give it a seven. Some very big autos in here. Of course, there is some filler as well. And we have a lot of the non-sports autos. Some of those 
actually end up holding a lot of value later on. I go ahead and give it a seven, maybe not quite as strong as last year's, but still a pretty strong showing. Uh, for the pack odds in production, I give it a five, kind of middle of the road set. It is available in hobby. It is available in retail. So your production is going to be a little bit higher, which make your pack odds a little bit higher, but it's not produced as much as the flagship. So there is that we've got card quality as well. For the first time in a while, I do think that Topps' quality control has been a little bit better of late. I have always liked the Allen & Ginter cardstock. It's that vintage thick kind of cardboard feel to it, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6. For historical value, I give it a 5.5. The reason I do that, some of the bigger cards in this set do hold a ton of value. Some of the bigger autos, they're sought after, but... For all of those, we also have the more common cards. The rookies tend to be softer on the secondary market. So I go ahead and give it a 5.5. Artistic value, I'm giving it an 8. There is so much to love about the different materials that are used in the parallels, the wood, cloth, the metal, the stained glass. It takes on the kind of painted design from Allen and Ginter in the past. So some very nice artistic value that you find in Allen & Ginter. So I go ahead and give it an eight. And for a cost value, I give it a 6.5. We have a low entry point, low cost per card here, three hits in a $125 box, which is pretty uncommon in 2021. So there is some value there. However, just know that some of these cards, especially the base cards, are not gonna hold the value that their counterparts will on the secondary market but you do have a chance at some very big hits here. So I go ahead and give it a 6.5. So what we're going to do, we're going to add all those up and that's going to give us our one cent sensational set ranking for 2021 tops Allen and Ginter, which is a 66, which makes it a lower four star set. I believe that it is a set that is not for everyone, but I believe it is one of the most fun sets of the 2021 season and every season for that matter. You have to kind of know what you're looking for when you go into it. You have to like the fact that there's non-baseball card um, materials that are found throughout. You also have to know that some of these cards aren't gonna hold the same value on the secondary market. However, the fun, the nostalgia, the rip cards, the DNA relics, all sorts of those things make this a very, very fun set to open. And anytime you have dinosaur DNA, you're going to get a good score from me. So I go ahead and give it a 66. In 2020, it was a 67. So it comes back just a little bit. Some of that mainly around the auto checklist. Still a very nice auto checklist this year. Last year, I think it had a little bit better non-sports figures. So how does Topps Allen & Ginter rank from all the other sets that have been produced in the 2021 card season? Well, it pops in in the top 10 at number 10, ranked at 66, comes in just behind Topps Finest, which is at a 67.5. Bowman Baseball still leads the way with a high four-star 77.5 score. And rounding out our top five, Gypsy Queen Stadium Club Series 1 and Inception. Panini only has one set in the top 10, but we do have Panini Prism. That set guide and review is coming out tomorrow, so we will see if Panini can make a little bit of headway into the top 10 of our 2021 set rankings. They had plenty in there last year, but they have fallen off this year a little bit, so we'll, we'll see if Prism, be on the lookout for that review tomorrow. We'll see if that can make some headway. But for now, Tops dominating the 2021 card season. And Allen and Ginter gets in there in the top 10 out of 23 total sets that have been reviewed so far. So let me know in the comments below what you think about Allen and Ginter. If you're buying into it, if you think it's just kind of a weird set for me, I'm going nostalgic fun. But if you think it's weird, if you're buying in, let me know what you think below. Be sure to throw over to first, hit that like button for me and subscribe so you can see all of these set reviews. Hit that bell notification so you can see them first. And until next time, I hope you have good luck ripping your Allen and Ginter packs. And as always, be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors. And until next time, take care.